Hello, welcome to this newest video about the update of Project Iris. So the feedback has been very amazing and you suggested lots of new features uh, that really help uh, the tool to be more powerful. I added most of them in the newest update and I would like to go over them in detail. So first the main window didn't change much, um, also the general settings are quite the same as before. Um, we have now an update indicator that shows you uh, if your version of Irish, Iris is up to date. So let's head over to the interactors uh, and there we have the most uh, of the changes. So first you can see that we have a key binding added here and the pause button. Um, the key binding I will describe in a minute and the pause button does just um, omit the key triggers of the interactors and that's really handy while you're configuring your interactor setup. So let's start by adding one interactor and let's go to the edit page and as you can see here uh, we have quite a few new options to configure an interactor. So I can now apply a label for my interactor and uh, as you can see we have here a slider for the font size uh, and I can change the size of the label inside the interactor. Uh, the next thing uh, that is really neat is we can lock um, the interactor and when it's locked we also have the option to apply some sort of opacity or see-through effect um, to the interactor. So if you want to see your interface behind the interactor you can use this option um, to get some sort of see-through effect. And remember that's only available while the interactor is locked. So uh, for now I don't need this. Um, the next thing is we can enter the position and the size of the interactor manually. So if I enter 200 pixel width and 200 pixel height um, I can change the size and I can also change the position of the interactor. So when I'm adding or when I'm adding some pixels here uh, you can see it moves down on the screen. The really neat feature about this is you can even uh, move the interactor outside of the screen bounds. So if I my screen height is 2200 pixel, uh, 1200 pixel and if I enter 1200 you can see it moved out of the screen bounds but it is still active and still there. So if I go back uh, you can see where it is. Um, for this feature to be handy you would need some sort of physical um, post-it attached to your screen monitor or something like that so that you know where your interactor is actually placed. So this is how you can move interactors even out of the screen bounds. Um, then we have the key assignment that works quite as before and the behavior. Um, the next thing is um, here we can add some sort of dwell time. The dwell time is the time you have to focus on the interactor before it comes active. So let me add uh, about one second here and when I now look at my interactor you can see that I have to look at it for quite some long time and if I focus um, it gets activated. Um, that's the dwell time and we have the same effect for cooldown. So when it got activated um, I can prevent it from re reactivating for the time and this time is um, described by the cooldown. So now I'm activated, now I look away and it can't be activated um, in that time. So um, when I keep looking at it uh, and I have this cooldown so I look away and look on it, um, it will get activated after this cooldown is done. The next thing uh, we have is key activation. So let me add a few other interactors um, to actually see what key activation does. So let's add one more. And I will uh, order them linearly. Let's unlock this. 
and in all those four interactors I will activate the key activation. As you can see the dwell time become disabled and also the cooldown become disabled when I'm selecting key activation. So for the key activation we need uh, an activator key set up here and I'm choosing F8 for now. So what I have now um, is I can activate the interactors by actually pressing the F8 key. As you can see, um, I'm looking at the interactor, it becomes selected, as it is indicated by the blue color, and when I now press my F8 key, it becomes activated. So, this is the activation by key, and the neat thing about this is even I can uh, look away from the interactors and the last one that is selected, that is blue, I can activate it by just pressing the key. So there's always one interactor selected and I can change the selection looking at the new interactor and again look somewhere else. Um, I can even cover my eyes now and activate um, the last interactor I have chosen. So this is really cool uh, for having absolute control and you can wander around with your eyes and when you're sure you have the right interactor you hit this um, key or set up a key binding in the kinetic mouse which actually triggers your interactors. So that's it for the newest features. Uh, thank you very much uh, for all the feedback and response. As you can see it makes quite a difference um, as I implemented most of the features you, you, su you suggested and I'm very happy um, to develop this tool for your needs. So that's it. Thank you very much and I can't wait that to see the cool setups you can come up with using Iris. See you next time. Bye.